Honourable Speaker of Parliament, Honourable Majority Leader, Honourable Minority Leader, Honourable Members of Parliament. I am very happy, very happy to be here today with the representatives of the people of Ghana. I express to you my gratitude for the warm welcome I received since my arrival at all levels in Ghana. I'm the first Prime Minister leader to visit the gorgeous country. I'm sure I will not the last one. I'm the first after a lot of people, but I'm sure about this. And I received a very great work. So, thank you so much. And thank you also, Mr. Speaker, for inviting me to the rest of the family. In every nation, in every country, the parliament is the house of democracy. It's the core of democratic life. But this is particular to here. I am not really sure about the great value of Ghanaian democracy for Africa and for world empire. Let me be very clear. You are very, very proud about your democracy. Be proud because your experience is a great model for the neighbors and not only for the neighbors. This morning, I had a chance to visit some Ghanaian historical sites. It was impressive. Also, for a statue realized by Italian sculpture, but this is not the <laughs> most of them, most of them, relate to your democratic history and the democratic values that you embody here today, every day. Ghana sets aside the democratic record in the country. The way you work together, coming from extremely diversified, diversified backgrounds, is a reason of pride and honor for all of you, all the party. And we'll never stop repeating the dialogue. And the, democracy. the antidote against terrorism, against violence. I refer to class that we, in Africa and in Europe, are confronted with the threat of terror, of course, in the church, in the mosque, in the synagogue, in the university, but also in the streets of Europe, in front of restaurants, in front of theater, in front of stadium, as happened just few weeks ago in Paris. The threat of terror, of course, but also the threat of the, the values and the freedom that we uphold. I deeply believe that democracy, culture, and defense of individual rights are the last form of resistance against violence. The asymmetric fight against terrorism, indeed, and the violence of those who want to destroy our values, including those of compassion, inclusion, and unity. I am here to repeat with you this very important value we share together. A few days ago, Mr. Speaker, I was in Mantova, a little but very gorgeous city in my country. The Italian city named the Italian capital of culture for 2016. I want to highlight today to this August house that not only is culture what keeps societies together, culture is what helps us win over fear, win over terror. This is what I pledge to you today in our common struggle. Terrorists aim at disintegrating societies by having them living in fear possibly because uh, they have a constructive project of their own. They try to kill us. When they are not able to kill, they try to force us to live in the fair. We must refuse this message. And together, in the name of culture, in the name of ideals, in the name of democracy, fight against this terrible message and the unity in the unity of values, work together because we think the future is in our side. The future is for our children. 
The future is for our grandchildren. We live in a globalized world, this is a fact. But this acquired reality, our closeness, and the fact that you're peaceful, inclusive, and diverse democracy means a lot to the world and to Italy in particular. We share many other efforts in our respective regions as well as globally. Italy is strongly committed to supporting peace and security in Africa. Italy is a bridge for geographical position, also for, conform, for the, 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 the form of the country. But Italy is a bridge above all because in this moment we push European people to change the direction of policy. In the last period, European people don't think about African possibilities and opportunities. They consider Africa only as a problem. Particularly true, this is in the migration field. When the newspaper, the media, speaking about Africa, for the problem of migration, for the crisis. But really, the relation between Europe and Africa is a great opportunity for both, is a win-win operation for the next 20 years. And Italy is absolutely committed with my government, and not only with my government, with my people, more correctly, to write a new page of this dialogue and open a new strategy and push European people and push European institutions to understand the strategic value of friendship between Europe and Africa. We are fostering regional initiatives, uh, first and foremost through for our strategic relation with the African, the African Union, promoting the development of the peacekeeping capabilities of African partners. Since 2008, the Italian Africa Peace Facility has provided a flexible instrument to finance and support African Union's projects in the field of peace and security, in particular in mediation and in peacekeeping. And uh, we are also very concerned and committed with the stabilization, obviously, with the north of Africa continent. For us, particularly, the Libyan crisis is a major source of concern for, for us, especially because uh, of its regional implication. We keep calling on our Libyan and international partners to support the political process. But I think, while I appreciate the constructive role played by African partners and the African Union in supporting the Libyan mediation and the United Nations efforts toward the political solution, while I said that, at the same time, I know this part of the continent is a strategic partner for the future. The, it, Italy is a long-standing supporter of the United Nations peacekeeping and peacebuilding efforts. But we recognize here the very important uh, good contribution by Ghanaian people and Ghanaian troops in, uh, the same, in the same uh, level of uh, cooperation. Ghana and Italy share a common vision based on democracy and rule of law, respect for human rights and international promotion of peace and multilateralism. Italy is the EU, EU member state that most contributes in terms of budget and military personnel to peacekeeping operation, just like Ghana is among the largest in Africa. In this respect, let me mention our common effort to the stabilization of Lebanon, where Ghanaian and Italian troops together are jointly playing an essential role. I visited our UNIFIL mission in Lebanon last December, where we have more than 1,000 blue helmets to the mission. Ghana's crucial contribution to UNIFIL, led in this moment by Italian uh, Commander is key to the mission's effectiveness and success. Thank you so much, Madise, for your effort. But at the same time, I visited a school in Beirut. I read in the eyes of the people, of the refugees, of the young refugees, on the sons of refugees, the terror and the fear for the future. The world is changed. What happened in every corner of the world today is absolutely in our mobile. After two minutes, three minutes, 
The world is interconnected and nobody could uh, hidden in front of reality. So, Ghana and Italy today together could change a perception around the world. And uh, this is important uh, in Lebanon, yes, in the high-level experience, competence, and the professional, professional, professionality assured by the soldiers from Ghana and Italy represent a value. But it's true, let me be very clear, clear in, every, in every field of our cooperation. So, this is time in which it's not sufficient military effort. It's not sufficient diplomatic effort. We need a cultural effort together. It's important for you in this part of the world. In a part of the world in which we have a lot of opportunities and assets, but also a lot of problems. This is true for us. In a moment in which Europe seems very far from the values of a father of the country. The people who 60 years ago in Rome signed the first treaties of the European community. Both nations, Ghana and Italy, have now a decisive role in the respective regions integration progress. Italy was one of the founding members of the European Union. And this morning, I like to pay a tribute to Kwame Nkrumah's vision yeah. about Africa's unification and to accomplishment of West African state in building the present community of Western African states. I read the book, Africa Must Unite, Unit. Not only was a vision for this continent, it's a message today also for everyone. Those words resound the same year when uh, six enlightened leaders of Europe convened in Rome to sign the first uh, treaty to change the peace and to change the history. It was the beginning of a process in Europe of reunification. You think about it, for a lot of years, European people, for a lot of centuries, killed themselves. For a lot of centuries, European people was divided. European Union means that together we can change the history. This is true also for you today, but also for us. We, we need a new vision for the world. We need a new vision uh, focused on the ability and the capacity to invest a new generation of a new responsibility. But uh, we have a lot of challenges in front of us. Terrorism, climate change, mass migration, global economy shutdown, emergence of new big players to amazing technology and science innovation. The frontiers of uh, human life are different respect 10 years ago, 20 years ago, together. If we focused together on a different strategy, we can change the world. Obviously, this is important for strategic vision, but we have also our bilateral relations very important. Our economies are becoming more and more interdependent. We are working together on missions and projects, particularly in the agribusiness and energy sectors. I consider very important the words of your president during the meeting in La Valletta. He told to the leaders of the European Union, please don't speak only about migration. Speak about agricultural investment in Africa. Speak about the possibility to invest in a different vision. I consider that absolutely true. And as Italian people, we are ready. We are ready for agribusiness here but we are ready also for energy sectors. Perhaps one of the most defining elements of italian ghanian economic partnership is ENI's project, ENI's project, for gas supply for domestic Ghanaian market. We know this is a moment very difficult for oil price, but I am here and uh, I host 
in the delegation, the CEO of ENI, Claudio Descalzi, exactly to give a message of continuation and the presence of Italian investors in this country. Let me be very clear. ENI has been historical connect to Ghana, but this project, the new project, will be a game changer for power generation in the country, bring benefits from here to 2036. I think it's a good message of a friendship, it's a good message of business, it's a good message for the future of our relation. This is the kind of partnership Italy wants to build with the friend nations in Africa. We need open democracies and vibrant economies to partner with. Your wealth, your wealth will be our wealth. The challenges that are confronted with are so great that they require increased international cooperation among nations that share the same values and the same goals. We are ready. As Italians, we are here. We are a great country, very important for the culture, for the masterpieces, for the statues, for the food. It's important. It's a, it's a form of culture. <laughs> I don't speak about soccer, but about the food, yes. At the same time, I know our main, very important sector will be the international cooperation. If Italy will continue to be a bridge is for the possible opportunities, but also for the great values. And this for me is clear every day when I receive a message from my navy to the people who try to save every day, every night in the Mediterranean Sea. There is a demagogic and populist campaign against uh, this intervention of Italian people and uh, in part also of European people. And maybe I lost some votes maybe I lost some consensus. I prefer lose the consensus than lose the dignity. And I consider the human dignity more important, that we will continue to save the people on the sea. But at the same time, we know, and you know, the only way to stop human trafficking is work together. Build a possibility of creation jobs here give opportunity to the people and together fight against the terrible message. This is the real and important challenge for everyone. Europe must invest here and give the message for the young generation to grow up in, the, in Ghana if they want and at the same time to be able don't forget to be human people. Because human dignity is the more important thing around the world. And this is the heritage of my country. A country in which the human dignity is the most important thing in 2000 year of history. So, we don't encourage the illegal flaws. We fight trafficking human uh, being. I'm here with the chief of police of Italy. We bring in the jail more than 1,000 people in Italy who were the responsible of human trafficking. At the same time, we think together, we give a message as Ghanaian and Italian people, if we work together, we will be able to build a new world. Finally, global issues are looking more and more momentous. Growth prospects look weaker than expected. We need to do more in order to strengthen the world economy by supporting demand and at the same time continuing to implement structural reforms. Two, this end, two elements are key. Investment 
and jobs, jobs and investment. We can increase our growth prospectively only if we invest more, targeting in particular small and medium enterprise, the real core business of Italian economy, and projects in infrastructure, in innovation. Ghana, as an ancient rich culture, masterly summarized by the Adinkra symbols. As I said at the beginning, Parliament uh, is living the heart of a democratic society. It's not by the chance the EU Parliament emblem carries a few important ones that have struck me. Therefore, to conclude my address, I've chosen not this symbol, but a proverb that is associated to another Adinkra symbol and perfectly summarize the spirit and the sense of my visit to Ghana and of our bilateral relation. Forgive my pronunciation. I'm just a beginner. Boa mena memoa wo. Help me and let me help you. I think this is the strategic value of our friendship. Thank you so much.